All right, I want us to go to God wants to bless me. God wants to bless me. But let's go to Deuteronomy 28 verse 2. Now I want you to understand that the blessing of the Lord is ours because we have become a Christian. All right. These promises were made to Abraham and they were the blessing of the, of the Lord to him. And because in Galatians it says that we have now been made heirs into Abraham's promise because we have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ. So what are the promises made to Abraham that are now ours? It's really important that we get this. So the promise is that God wants to bless us is one of them. Deuteronomy 28 verse 2 it says this, And all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you, because you obey the voice of the Lord your God. Here comes the catch. We are entitled to these blessings. Some Christians have said to me, but how come is it that I don't see this activated in my life? How come is it that I just don't see these things happening? I want to tell you something, that obeying the word is very, very important. Very important. All right? And one of the biggest things, and I want to tell you where we go wrong, the biggest setback, the biggest failure of Christians, the number one problem why you don't get what you are trusting God for, is what do you think it is? Some people are going to go lack of faith. Some people are going to go you're doubting, all sorts of things. All right? What do you think your number one problem is? Let me tell you what it is. Your mouth. What you confess over your life, what you say over your family, what you say in a bad situation or a difficult situation is going to determine whether you are going to get it or not. You see, as you release it, it determines and lets us know where your faith is. You see, if you are not trusting God, and you're not obeying God's word. The Bible says, think of things of, that are godly, noble, honorable. Of, of re, got some sort of a, a report to it. A positive report. Go on those things and release the word of God. Think on it. Speak life. It doesn't mean that there's life at the moment. All right? You can come into a situation that is dark. You speak life. You'll change it. But one of the things that we do is we call negative stuff on us all the time. You know, this is a terrible situation. I'm not going to make it. Um, these children just are rebellious and everything else. Every time I catch a Christian parent saying that their child is rebellious, I pull them aside and rebuke them. Because they are calling that on their children every single day. They need to sit down and say, my children obey the Lord. My children love the Lord. My children obey the parents. So I want you to understand that God has his blessings. He has promised us. But he says this. Because you obey the voice of the Lord your God. Because you obey what I want. You are hearing my voice. You are doing what I ask. And for us as believers it's even easier. We should just be obeying the Christian Bible. If you believe that you are a Christian. You should be doing what the Bible says. If you don't do it, you're not going to get the blessing. You're not going to get it because you carry too much authority. And this is something that we need to understand as saints. We need to understand that we create our environment. We create our environment. Let me give you a confession. Okay. There was a time when, when we went through one of the worst times of our lives. We were ostracized. We were cut off. And everything else and and nobody wanted anything to do with us because we were considered a hot potato in this nation anyway so to cut a long story short a lot of people stayed away from us a lot of my friends stayed away from us they would just didn't know what to do with me and they just decided to stay out that's what happens with most people when the fire's on they'd rather just back off and just watch to see what's going to happen but yet came my mistake i started to confess that i didn't have any more friends I used to sit down and say to Janine, look, we don't have any friends. Until she rebuked me one day. She said, do you realize that you are calling this thing on us? That we don't have friends because of you. Because you are constantly sitting down and saying, look, I don't even have friends anymore. You need to change your confession. And then it was like, it hit me like a train. And then I realized that I was the cause of my problem. 
And so I had to sit down and go to God's word and start confessing life over my situation, confessing friendships, confessing um, relationships that are going well, even if it wasn't going well. And let me tell you something, the minute I started to do that, all of a sudden, people were coming and repairing relationships, coming and sorting out things. I mean, every single relationship, everyone that had caused trouble for us has come to make right. There hasn't been one that has not yet come to me and said, come, let's sort this thing out. God has restored every single one of them. So I'm saying we need to get to the blessing of the Lord. God wants to bless us. But make sure, make sure that you are not the cause of your own stumbling block. Make sure that you are not the one that is causing the problem for yourself. In Jesus' mighty name. All right. So I want us to um, take communion today. And as we take of the elements today, let us release the power of God over us in Jesus' name. And Lord, and thank the Lord that he wants to bless us. But we have to be in line with his word. We have to be in line of his word. And I want to tell you right now, I see God's blessing. I see God's blessing on a daily basis. I see the power of God moving. I see God doing things for my family and for my friends. I'm telling you now, restoring relationships, all sorts of amazing things. Let's pray together. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took bread and broke it. And he said that this is my body that was broken for you. Take it in remembrance of me. He took the cup and he said that this is my cup. My blood that was shed for you, take in remembrance of me. Took the body and he broke it. He said, this body is broken for you. It was broken for what? For our physical and emotional healing in Jesus' name. The cup of Jesus, the blood of Jesus was shed for your salvation, protection and provision. Let's pray together. Lord, I thank you right now in the mighty name of Jesus that as we come before you, Lord, we come and we just celebrate the price that was paid for us in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray right now that you're going to move by your spirit in our lives. I ask you please to forgive us of any wrongdoing, any wrong thought, action, mode, uh, motive, deed, intent, act, and, and action that we do. Lord, I ask you to cleanse us white as snow. But Lord, right now, I thank you that we are going to celebrate you. And Lord, that we are going to just recognize the price that was paid for us. But Lord, I pray right now that we will obey your word. Lord, that we will obey your word and we will do what you've called us to do in Jesus' name. We thank you for your anointing. We thank you for your blessing. And Lord, we thank you that you want to bless us with every spiritual blessing and every blessing in the physical. Lord, I thank you right now that as we take communion, Lord, that you'll forgive us for calling on the negative and restricting that blessing from flowing. In Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. Let's partake together. Lord, we come before you. This morning, we thank you, Lord, that we are healed by the power of God. We thank you, Lord, that the Holy Spirit that dwells inside of us quicken our mortal bodies. And Lord, we command every single symptom to go. We thank you, Lord, that we are healed in Jesus' mighty name. We call on divine health and we thank you, Lord, that we are healed by the power of God in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. Well, folks, I want to tell you, I've got some good news for you. Um, I, As I said, I'm on a plane in the next few hours and I'm into Pretoria and I'm looking forward to meeting the body of Christ. I'll tell you what, I have been waiting so long. I've been speaking to a camera for a very long time, but it's time that I get to know the people. I see your comments. I get to know you uh, just by some of the comments, statements and stuff. But I want to get to know people, all right? I'm a people person. I'm the guy who likes a big party and let's do this thing together. But I've got some good news. All right, I know that we limited the, the, uh, the bookings to two people per session. All right, we just wanted to make sure that everybody had a chance. But I want to let you know that if you want to bring more people to the sessions, you are welcome just to book again under somebody else's email or another name. Okay, so you're welcome just to rebook and you can bring more people. Okay, so we're just doing it now. We're opening it up. So if you want to bring your children or you want to bring somebody up, there's still space. And so while there's still space, we can fill it up. 
So you are welcome to spread the word. If you want to bring friends, bring some acquaintances, bring anybody, we are now opening it up. In fact, I'm going to actually ask that we increase the number on there. But if you get there and it still says only two people, just use your, own, your email again and then just book it under another name, your wife's name or somebody else's name, and you can get the booking, okay? And so I want you to know that there are still seats available for tonight and for tomorrow. And then obviously uh, Saturday and Sunday, there's still quite a lot because we can go up to 300. Okay, so I want to bless you. I want to say that it's going to be amazing. So please, guys, find out where I am in the area because I want to meet you more than you want to meet me. Okay, I want to find out who you are because I think we got amazing people in South Africa. Okay, so I'm really looking forward to this. And I'm really excited about what God is going to do as we travel across the nation. All right, in Jesus' name. Okay, and remember guys, it's free. Okay, it's free. You don't pay anything. It's gratis for need. Okay, so please just come and join us and have a good time. And then I know that sometimes in the week it's a bit tough. But listen, it's worth losing a little bit of sleep over it, okay? So if I'm within a 100K radius, 150K radius, come. Come meet me, all right? If you have to leave early, I'll pray for you quick, then you can leave. But you have to get that impartation. You have to get that activation because it's really important. And so it's going to be really nice. And what is really nice is, is that Janine's coming with. So you guys can meet her and get to know her as well. All right. And now let's get into our prayer this morning. We're going to pray in the name of Jesus for our economy. And we're going to pray over this COVID. All right. I believe that God wants to do something miraculous in our nation. I really do. And that he wants to make South Africa an example in the name of Jesus. That I, without any scientific evidence, without any explanation, without any reasoning, that this COVID thing crashes and dies in Jesus' name. All right. So let's pray. Father, I thank you right now in the name of Jesus. That as we come before you, we pray firstly for the economy of South Africa. I pray for every sector of our country in Jesus' name. Father, I pray that every business will be blessed. Lord, I pray right now that as we build altars, Lord, that they will be established in Jesus' name. And Lord, that the blessing of the Lord will be seen in every business in Jesus' mighty name. Father, I pray for supernatural connections, divine connections, supernatural contracts. Lord, right now in the name of Jesus, I pray that businesses will be blessed and our economy will prosper in the name of Jesus. Lord, right now, I thank you that you're going to move by your spirit in a mighty way right across every industry. And Lord, particularly, we pray for the farmers. This morning, I pray for the farmers. I pray for protection over the farms. And Lord, if there's any devious uh, plan to come against the farms, in Jesus' name, we bind it and we command it to be exposed in Jesus' mighty name. Father, I thank you that your blessing will rest over our farmers in Jesus' mighty name. Lord, right now, I pray for a supernatural release, Lord, of your, of your anointing over everybody who is praying for their businesses and for the, the, the economy in Jesus' name. Lord, right now, I pray for the COVID virus. Lord, we come against it in the name of Jesus. We command it to die, dissipate, and leave our nation. Lord, we command every single symptom to go and every form of it, every sign of it to leave our nation. Thank you, God, that every single hospital has zero COVID patients in it. Lord, we declare life over our nation. We declare life over our cities. We declare life over our people. We declare life over our businesses. In Jesus' mighty name. And Father, we bless you for rain. Lord, we call for rain across our nation. Father, we thank you that rain come and saturate our nation. And wherever there is a drought, we come against it. We cancel it out in the name of Jesus. And we release the power of God in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. Well, folks, I am so excited. I want to bless you. I want to just say thank you very much for participating and being part of this. Okay, and I want to just announce, and this is going to be really exciting, and we're going to deal with this in a lot more depth as we go around the nation, but we are starting small fellowship groups, all right? We are going to be starting, uh, literally, uh, my goal is to have more than a thousand small fellowship groups across this nation, where we are going to be equipping you, we're going to be training you, and we're going to be doing it in little small groups, 
All right, we've got a strategy, we've got a plan, we've got a, a, a specific assignment. And so if you would like to be part of one of our fellowship groups, now there's three levels that you could do. Number one is you could be a host. What does that mean? They could have it in your house. You say, I'll make my house available, okay, for a small fellowship group. Number two, you could be a facilitator. In other words, you would like to facilitate the actual meeting, which we are going to train you properly and get you ready for that. And number three, you could be both. You could sit down and say, listen, I want to be a facilitator and a host, all right? And then also you could, in the third one, sorry, so you got a host, a facilitator, and then your member to say, listen, I would like to be part of a small group. I want to actually meet somebody. We have digital things running, which is not going to stop farmers. Those guys can't get, they're going to be there. So we are going to be doing that all the time. But there are people who need to get to a group. They need people. And so we're going to smart start these small groups. And there's not going to be a whole string of leadership in between. It's going to be literally myself and one or two of our other elders and leaders. And then the, the groups. So it's direct contact with us all the time. Okay. So that we can put proper input into this nation. So that we can grow you up and build you up and establish you. Literally like a face-to-face. -face. So I want you to understand this is very important. Very, very important that we are going to do this. So you could say, listen, if you, if you sign the form, fathersheart.co.za. Look there, you'll see um, Home Fellowships is now open for those who would like to say where they would like to get involved. Okay, if you would like to be part of a, a small group, um, if you'd like to host one, and if you want to be a facilitator. And then we're going to take that data and we're going to start putting it together. And as soon as possible, while I'm doing the road trips and we're dealing with everything, we are going to start these groups because we believe in equipping the body of Christ. We believe in getting you ready for what is coming. I'm telling you right now, God is going to do something amazing still for South Africa. And we need the people ready to go and do what God has called them to do in Jesus' name. You don't have to be part of Father's Heart to be part of this. Okay, this is open for anybody who wants to be part of it. Okay, okay. so obviously we will just be um, facilitating it and, 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 and what's the name in the groups. Those Obviously the leaders will be part of Father's Heart because we need to teach what we are saying and train the way that I want to train. Because God has given me a gifting to train and equip people. And so we're busy working with a national strategy. How do I train the nation, whoever wants to get trained? And that's where we're going. So I want to bless you and say, saints, this is such an exciting time. There's so many things happening. All right. So if you want to book for tonight, you can still go to fathersart.co.za. Just on that page, just go look. I want to book for the road trip or I want to book for the fellowships. Okay. And you can see where you want to just stick what you need there. All right. So God bless you. Have an awesome day. And Pretoria, I'm going to see you in a few minutes. All right. We nearly, nearly, nearly there. All right. Let's go. Let's do our declaration this morning. In Jesus' name, I declare by faith that I walk in divine favor. I have preferential treatment. I have supernatural increase. I have restoration. I have increased assets. I have great victories. I have recognition, I have prominence, I have petitions granted, I have policies and rules changed, and battles won that I did not have to fight, all because of the blessing and the favor of God on my life.